Good day folks, uh, this is Tony Mitra and I have already put up part one of my talk with uh, scientist and Dr. Anthony Samsel. So here I present to you part two of Dr. Samsel's talk with me on carcinogenicity of the chemical glyphosate. Over to Dr. Samsel. Now, um, I've been investigating the diets that were fed those animals, and the diets came from Purina. Purina has been uh, supplying lab chows to, uh, uh, to the scientific community uh, since the 1960s, well before that. Um, and their, form, their formulations haven't changed uh, that much over the years. As a matter of fact, I called uh, Purina and I had a talk uh, uh, with uh, one of their managers, uh, product managers, and um, uh, we've done some emailing back and forth, and they've sent me uh, historical information on, uh, on their lab diets. I've zeroed in on the rodent lab diets, and I've zeroed in uh, on the addition of a few vitamins, uh, and I'm writing a paper about it, um, the addition of the vitamins uh, uh, are known to induce carcinomas. And back in 1978, 79, and 80, they were adding them to the lab diet. So it's very, very possible that the, uh, that the control animals, the incidence of uh, adenomas and carcinomas uh, that they've been seeing uh, in these laboratory animals were actually because of the added uh, nutrients uh, to the, uh, uh, and vitamins to the lab diets that they've been feeding the animals. Um, and I've got several studies that kind of bear that out. Uh, I've, I've, I've looked at... Um, I've looked at specific uh, vitamins. Uh, as a matter of fact, a study that's, that came out in the past six months shows that uh, that, that particular uh, vitamin that they're adding to these feeds uh, does induce cancers. So um, uh, I can tell you that glyphosate works synergistically uh, with other chemicals. In my last paper, I cited a half a dozen different pa patents uh, of how glyphosate um, uh, works synergistically and increases the toxicity of other chemicals. So um, these studies that I've just uh, uh, cited to you, um, these long-term rat feeding studies where they saw higher incidence of uh, adenomas and carcinomas are consistent uh, with the way glyphosate be behaves. Glyphosate uh, works synergistically with other things that could induce cancer, plus it uh, induces cancer itself. Um, now, um, I'd just like to go back to where we started with, um, with lactate dehydrogenase. Yes. Uh, that, that particular enzyme, um, uh, that particular uh, enzyme uh, can induce cancers. Um, it is a, it's a it's a key enzyme uh, that uh, influences our NADH, our nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, um, uh, which is uh, our body uses that in redox reactions. Uh, it it, uh, it um, transfers um, uh, electrons from uh, one reaction to another. Um, and uh, also NAD, which is uh, uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, that's, a, that's an oxidizing agent. The, nic the NADH, um, uh, which is, uh, uh, that is a reducing agent. So... Um, these these are these are two uh, uh, molecules in our biology that are important for us to be able to um, process reactive oxygen species that could induce uh, tumor cells. And um, depending on the level of lactate dehydrogenase, uh, 
that can uh, that could decrease ATP uh, production. ATP is uh, is uh, adenosine triphosphate, and uh, when that happens, um, then um, that allows tumorous cells uh, to increase uh, the reactive oxygen species um, in their metabolism, and so that that induces a, a, an even more uh, adverse reaction. So um, the the fact that that glyphosate um, uh, induces an increase of lactate dehydrogenase that we saw in the rat, rat, uh, the rabbit study, which they dismissed, um, it was reconfirmed in the rat study. They, they found, um, and I've been going through the data sheets, I'm compiling it now, but um, they found significant uh, increases depending on the dose that was given of lactate dehydrogenase. So um, we know that uh, that that can uh, induce uh, cancers, adenomas, um, and uh, it's involved in in uh, in other uh, disease states. So um, I, I'm still sifting through the data. I'm uh, I'm about to uh, to write a paper on uh, glyphosate and cancer. Uh, in light of the um, the recent uh, United Nations um, uh, finding where they reclassified glyphosate uh, as a 2A probable carcinogen, they were very, very correct in doing that. Uh, as a matter of fact, glyphosate, uh, in my professional opinion, glyphosate is not a probable carcinogen. It is a carcinogen based on uh, these trade secret studies that Monsanto had the EPA seal so that nobody could see them and nobody could revisit the data. What I've read and, uh, and what I've started to chart and plot shows unequivocally that glyphosate causes cancer, causes adenomas, it, uh, uh, it causes all kinds of tumorigenic growth, whether it's uh, cancerous or non-cancerous. Should it be on the market? No. Should it be on our food? No. As a matter of fact, there shouldn't be any herbicides in our food. Um, if they take glyphosate off the market, it's not going to solve the problem if they substitute it with another herbicide. Because no herbicide belongs in our food, whether it's 2,4-D, whether it's Dicamba, whether it's uh, 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 glufosinate, or what have you. There should be no herbicides in our food because it disrupts our bacterial homeostasis, it disrupts our immune system. And when we disrupt our bacteria and uh, uh, the, the microbi uh, microbiota uh, with, uh, within us, disease ensues. Disease begins with the disruption of our microbiome. And, uh, and that goes for many, many diseases. Uh, there are cascades of diseases. Uh, that uh, that happen from the disruption of bacterial species. Each bacterial species has has a particular function to perform. If you knock out a particular species, you allow uh, another uh, species to overgrow, and uh, that species will produce different biomolecules that will have different signaling effects within our own biology. Our 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 bacteria of which there are about a thousand species, make biomolecules. They make uh, our B vitamins, our, our vitamin B3, B6, B9, B12. Uh, they make vitamin K. Uh, they, uh, uh, all of these important vitamin uh, vitamins, they even make fatty acids, beneficial fatty acids for our biology. Plus they make other signaling molecules. And bacteria communicate with each other. Not only do they communicate with each other, but bacteria communicate with our own cells, and uh, they trigger, uh, they turn, they can turn our genes on and off through the biomolecules that they produce. So when we start messing with uh, with our microbiome and and the bacterial species, uh, all kinds of serious stuff happens, 
And uh, when we mess up our enzymes, like uh, uh, through uh, our, our CYP450 enzymes um, and other enzymes, and, and we uh, mess up our, uh, our amino acids uh, through uh, herbicides, we're, we're setting ourselves up for a, a, a life of disease and misery. So uh, it would be my recommendation that every government on this earth, no matter where they are, they need to ban herbicides, period. Not just glyphosate. All herbicides from the food supply and from the food supply of animals. It's, uh, it's inco unconscionable to feed uh, animals uh, food that's contaminated with uh, herbicides. It sets them up for disease and misery just like it sets us up for disease and misery. So um, uh, I'm, I will be summarizing uh, my thoughts and, uh, and uh, basing uh, uh, my new paper uh, on glyphosate 4 that, um, that will contain um, results of the Monsanto trade secret studies revisited. Um, uh, this, this data um, that Monsanto uh, knew about in 1978 to 1980 and beyond, they knew that glyphosate uh, uh, was problematic. And uh, they used historical controls to cancel out the truth. They still use historical controls today uh, to do that, that very same thing. And that practice should be banned from science. We should not be using historical controls to get rid of the evidence.